Just a reminder. Some incredible PBA career accomplishments compiled by our outstanding final spiel for this one here tonight. ESPN and the PBA present the championship round finals of the Greater Harrisburg Open. This evening in picturesque Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, a suburb of the state's capital, Harrisburg, at tonight's championship round finals of the Greater Harrisburg Open. Welcome to ABC West Lanes, located in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Hi, everybody. I'm Denny Schreiner, along with PBA Hall of Famer Mike Durbin. And Mike, uh, you've been doing the show, how many, what, 15 years on 15 ESPN? 15 years. This is my ninth year. This may be the strongest finals field that we have ever assembled. It is a very strong field, Denny. 51 titles in all for the five bowlers. We have probably uh, three future Hall of Famers. They may all be future Hall of Famers, but I would say three definite future Hall of Famers. So it doesn't get much better than that. Let's talk about our top seed, Randy Peterson, who's come a long way back the past couple of years after some serious knee uh, surgery. Uh, he is our top seed. He's looking for career title number 10. We all realize how important that is after watching Dave Husted last week. And Randy is a former PBA national winner. And career title number 10, as uh, Dave Houston said last week, it's kind of an unwritten rule when you get that, that that's going to qualify you for the PBA Hall of Fame. That's in the back of every bowler's mind. That'll be in the back of Randy's mind tonight as he bowls for title possible number 10. Two years ago, our number two seed, Chris Warren, was one of the best players on the tour. He finished second in the PBA uh, Player of the Year honors balloting. But since that time, Michael, it has been a struggle. It has been a real struggle, and it's a mystery because uh, Chris was a bright young star, and suddenly in the last two years, only $43,000. Last year, only $13,000. No telecast at all. He's kind of come out of it this year. He's made $30,000 so far this year. He made a telecast earlier this summer. Now he's qualified second. He'd like to win two games tonight to really get back into the victory column and break that slump for sure. Triple Crown winner Pete Weber is our number three seed, 21 career victories. He's also won at least one or more PBA tournaments in the last 10 consecutive years. He hasn't won yet this year, and so you know he wants to break through. Well, Pete's always a threat, no matter what position he's in. Earlier this year, he led back-to-back -back tournaments, lost them both, then he's second both times. Then later in the year, he qualified fourth, moved right up to the title match, but lost that to Mike Edwards and finished second again. So he's got three seconds this year. That 10 victories in a row, 10 years in a row, is very important to him. He wants to win tonight to continue that streak. Two years ago, 1992, Bob Vespi wowed him right here at ABC West Lanes when he won. All the experts at that point in time were pointing to him as one of the new superstars on the PBA Tour. And even though he's made the show three years in a row in this bowling center, he has not fared well the last couple of seasons. Well, he's been in a slump. He's uh, been in an admitted slump. And uh, one of the reasons that he says this has happened is that the lane conditions he feels are hooking early in the lane. That's forced him to adjust his game by trying to throw harder and that's kind of thrown things out of whack. Evidently, though, things have fallen into place here. He won here two years ago, finished third last year. He's got to win four games tonight, though, Denny, to keep that record going here. Old reliable Walter Ray Williams Jr. qualifies number five. It's the ninth telecast for him in 1994. Has just one victory, but oddly enough, Michael, he's done better from the bottom of the ladder than he has from the very top. And the bottom that you're talking about earlier this year in Las Vegas, he was qualified fifth, went all the way up and won that tournament. He's got four seconds so far this year, Denny. And uh, one of his goals is to have more firsts than seconds, and he's not going to do it if he keeps finishing second. So he wants to go all the way up tonight and not finish second. All right, just in case you don't believe Michael or myself about how strong this field is here. This evening, we had a chance to talk to our top five and ask them, hey, guys, is this the best field that you've seen in a while? This is a definitely a strong field. A lot of power players, too. I'm not sure what I'm doing up there. <laughs> I'm glad to be considered a great bowler still. Uh, I was really doubting myself for the past year, you know. Uh, but Pete, you look me say anything. There's nothing better than a 20-time Tylus that's right-handed out here right now. Uh, Walter Ray. How many shows is this? 25 in two years? It's crazy. Uh, Chris uh, has been a great, great factor for up until two years ago. He's gone through his little slump like I'm having right now. And then Randy Peterson, probably the best 
one of the best clutch bowlers that we've ever seen. This is by far the strongest field of the top five that we've had ever in probably the last four or five years. This is the strongest field, so look out for the scores. It's the strongest by far. By far, it's the strongest. I mean, you have Randy Patterson, you have Pete Weber, you have me, you have Bob Vespi, and you have Walter Ray. I mean, what do you want? You got every game in the world there. And we'll see how those games come together here this evening. $16,000 for first place. And we're ready for the start of match number one. Walter Ray Williams, Jr. and Bob Vespi. Well, you heard Chris Warren. What more do you want? We've got all the games. Well, uh, I also heard Pete Weber predicting scores. We hope that comes true. It doesn't always follow suit. Interesting practice session. The players have played all over both of the championship round pair of lanes, 33 and 34. And Walter Ray opens up with a near 2-8-10. Interesting uh, that he was going high on that lane the whole practice session. And like he did a couple of weeks ago, it comes out really throwing hard right away, harder than he was in practice. Amazing, he is so accurate that he takes a non-reactive polyurethane, polyester ball and goes straight at that 2-8 that you have to hit dead flush to make him no trouble. Dead eye. Bob Vespi from Coral Springs, Florida, averaged 240 throughout the week on this pair of lanes. Interesting because during the practice, Bob Vespi had very little shot. As the oil started to carry down the lane, it got better and better. The PBA here is oiling 32 feet, buffing to 35, which means the last 25 feet of the lane are bone dry. And we can see right there that he's setting it down. He's building about seven and a half boards and seven, almost 17 miles per hour. He had a lot of wild shots in practice. Looks like he stood in one spot for a long time to try and create a little carry down and manufacture a shot of his own. Well, you know, that proves he's thinking. You know, I remember Jimmy Certain used to do things like that when he uh, could get on a teledesk, try and create an area of the lane that he could play in. The guys predominantly this week have played outside. The PBA uh, figured that they'd be playing outside with their lane maintenance set up here as Walter just stumps it from the outside. Walter A, five-step player. The head is very, very steady. Pushes it out right at this point. Head and shoulders go forward. Slides right on up there. You can see the balance right here in line. That left arm going out there like no one else does. Walter A winning all eight matches last night. Coming from behind. And he ends up with a nice double. Did you notice how the nice balance that he had right there at the finish? You know, as he, he just went into the slide completely in balance and zipped right through that shot. That was a strike for the moment it left his hand. Into the lane again for Vespi, wide arcer. And uh, Michael, we're seeing about as far apart on the spectrum as you could possibly get between these two. Vespi, a power player. Covers a lot of boards on the lane with a real cupped wrist. Watch his wrist there. As he gets to the backswing, look at the elbow is bent right here. The wrist is cupped. Now watch as he comes right through and just forces it through, rolls that wrist right through the ball. Two different styles. Both can be successful. Oh, he has opened up beautifully, Mike, and uh, you know that Bob Vespi was really hoping to get off to a fast start against Walter Ray. We'll be back with more of match number one from ABC West Lanes in Mechanicsburg after this time. So, what does happen to all that money you overpay for car insurance? GEICO, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. A lot of people are afraid of being dropped by their car insurance company. But at GEICO, we offer renewal to over 98% of our customers. So we prefer to drop car insurance rates. GEICO, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. In the next century, when we walk into a drugstore, what will we buy for pain? Advil. That's right. You see, the ingredient in Advil is the number one doctor-prescribed pain reliever in its class. That's what's in Advil. 
in non-prescription strain. No wonder doctors recommend Advil by name. Always will. That kind of relief is timeless. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. The championship round finals of the Greater Harrisburg Open are being brought to you by... Geico. One 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on your car insurance. Call 1-800-841-3000. Take a look at uh, the players and the positions they held round after round. Well, Bespy <laughs> didn't get off to too good a start. Pete Weber uh, had a number of different players in first place. Randy, the only time he was there in that last game. How about Walter Ray? Walter Ray just, just inched along. Inch by inch. And when it counted, he was there. A lot of speed. Does he get the pin action? Yes, he does. That's important. You come back out of that commercial break, keep your speed up. That's what I used to tell myself, you know, because the tendency would be to get a little soft then. And to get that strength. And one more, and he's right even with Vespi. See the score. A lot of strikes already. Maybe Pete Weber was right, huh? Seven out of eight. That's a hurry. Walter was given it the wind-up move, and now he's got himself a bit of a predicament. And again, that was like a force shot there. I mean, he's throwing really hard on that lane, but that wasn't nearly as clean or as on balance as the shot that he threw in the uh, third frame there. 278, as the ball comes in light. You know, anything can happen when you hit it there. You got a really a bad break by the four pin falling over. A little different hand action, a little more hook, and the most accurate spare shooter on the tour takes care. But the question is, then, was he was he trying to play play it that way, or was he aiming to the right of the two pin? <laughs> He'll never tell us. Now, no, he, at the two eight, he threw the plastic ball. At this one, he throws his regular urethane ball, hits it on the left. I don't think he was aiming to hit it on the left myself. Must be here something, some kind of clicking noise going on. I don't know what it is. right there got it into the oil a little bit early and, and it held it came up light in the pocket you know it's still and struck there ball over about the third row out to maybe the fifth board on that lane now they he had been getting about the, the 12th board and this one's closer to the 15th i would think well you look at the difference between these two vespi throwing at about 16 8 and walter ray's last shot on lane 33 was 19 2. Wow, six in a row. Looks like the uh, 16 eights uh, prevailing right now. And the animated one, Bob Vespi, starts to pump a little iron. Well, he will get animated when he starts stringing strikes. He's an emotional player. Walter Ray with another strike on 34. But he finds himself trailing and has from the opening good. Well, the, the lane 33 is the, the, the key for him right there. He's got uh, two shots left on that lane. If he can find a way to hit it both times. Walter, 19.4. Basically, you know, he's, he bellies it at about three boards. What a difference in styles. Ball doesn't make it up again. You see him throw his hands up in the air. I mean, he felt like he made the adjustment through a good shot. But he could tell at, at, at 30 feet that the ball wasn't going to make it back. Nails a two pin. But a little consolation to him at all. As he just falls further and further behind. No margin for error against the guy who opens with the first six. Five. This 
kind of a defensive shot there, uh, not as nearly as aggressive as Vespi usually is. Switches balls to shoot the three pin. Wants to go straighter at this. <laughs> Every spare is an adventure with Bob. A little smile on his face there. Trying to end a two-year drought here this evening. It has really been a test of the time for him over the last couple of years. A lot of times it's, it's something that a lot of bowlers go through out here. They make it through it, they're better bowlers for it. Wild shot again, gets to Brooklyn. Stood straight up and grabbed himself a big time break. We'll be back with the conclusion of game number one from the Greater Harrisburg Open right after these messages. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here's a new show from the network that brought you Beavis and Butthead. The story of the brothers Grunt. Ooh, they're always out on the hunt. Let it go out of their minds. See ya, trying to find Harry Bright, Tony, Bing, Dean, Sammy. The story of the brothers Grunt. Boom. Weeknights at 7 on MTV, you punk. At the Discovery Channel, we go to extraordinary lengths to tell extraordinary stories. Stories that take you off the beaten path. So if we see it, you see it. The Discovery Channel. Explore your world. Troy and Evan. Michael, you said they looked pretty good the other night against Denver. They looked awesome. They looked unbeatable against Denver the other night. Final preseason game for both teams. The Cowboys and the Saints coming your way on ESPN 8 o'clock. An NFL special. Just no weaknesses on that team, Tim. None. Has to hurry. Does. Still alive. He's been there all night on the right-hand lane. Yeah, the right lane. This is the key shot. I mean, he can still go off the sheet for 247, as Paige looks on. She's seen a lot of these games before. Mm. You know, she's an excellent horseshoe pitcher herself. Yeah, she really Not in Walter's class, but she, she does very well. Got to have this one. Sets him up for a possible 247. Vespi going to a 249 clip right now. The last two shots have been wild by Vespi. Like the last two times. That looks better. All right. He's just got to splice the board over there. He's got to be dead eye. Terrific adjustment by Walter Ray, giving himself a chance. A chance. Right. See how Vespi responds now. Needs to be aggressive right here. Give it room. Did two lucky breaks. Breaks up the 310 both times on that lane. See, right now, I think what's going through his mind is the struggle of the last year or two. And he sees he's got a great chance to win this game, but he's just not able to make the shot that he needs to make to put him away. Three pin disappears. Do you think he's conscious of the fact, Mike, that he's not throwing and executing right now? Oh, yeah, the last, last three shots, yeah. Not like, he didn't throw them like he did the first six. But right now, he's in the situation that if he goes nine spare strike, he's going to shut him out. So he needs to summon some courage. Exactly. Hey, that that's better. Room. Yep. Yep, no question about that, Michael. I think you were right on the button with that assessment because he just glided right along with the first six and then all of a sudden lost it. This one, he gave the room, gets it out to about the third board, he comes back, snaps out that half pocket virtually locks up the match and he knows it interesting last year he bowled a terrific game and lost to the eventual champion brian davis bowled 245 and lost to davis and shot 258 at him more room solid 10 but that's enough he's even if he misses it he's a winner he's got 248 if he misses it walter ray with a quick handshake there and uh, admitting defeats over walter ray uh, nine appearances in the championship round this year still just one victory but assembling an incredible year for a player that has just one title yeah 
Made 143,000 coming into this tournament. Uh, his only consolation here is, is he's not going to finish second. Good point. Well, Walter had that lane, didn't he? Just never missed it. We'll have to ask him about that left-hand lane a little later on. Well, you know, he can finish this game out for 247, have seven strikes on this right lane, and nine strikes overall, and not win the match. In fact, Vespi only got eight strikes. Walter could outstrike him and lose. Our top five averaged nearly 230 on this pair of lanes throughout the week. Of course, remember a year ago, Mike, 21 300 games in this tournament. This year, only two. Chris Warren threw one of them. Yeah. And 299 in the championship match right. a year ago. Shot obviously toned down considerably. But look at the final five. Cream comes to the top. Huh? All the way with one more. Could shoot 247. Well, make it 246. An excellent opening game here. Very competitive. Vespi survives. When we come back, I look at Mike Durbin's average builder from ABC West Lane to Mechanicsburg. Because they're helping to build dreams. Because of their spirit of teamwork, the men and women of Home Depot share in the spirit of the Olympics. And to help build better homes, we're proud to have Jeannie as a member of our Home Depot Olympic family. Jeannie is America's favorite maker of garage door openers and quality wet-dry backs. They give you their best, just like the U.S. Olympic team and just like the people at Home Depot. With Minwax polyurethane, you can do more than admire your wood. You can live with it, too, because Minwax contains pure urethane oil to protect wood while giving it beauty you can really live with. Minwax keeps wood beautiful. With Fixident, I can stay active and as confident as I need to all day. Even in the hottest liquids, when other adhesives stop holding, Fixident holds stronger and longer. That's why I fix it in and forget it. If your bacon cheeseburger isn't flame broiled, fire it. Welcome to Burger King. And get a new flame broiled bacon mega supreme. The new bacon mega supreme is a third pound of beef broiled over an open flame. And flame broiling beef frying four to one. Two patties smothered in hot, crispy bacon. Melted cheese, lettuce, and tomato. So if it's fried, it ought to be fired. Get the new flame broiled bacon mega supreme. More great taste for more great value. Only at Burger King. in the world's fastest cars. Compete Sunday morning at 7.50 Eastern in the Grand Prix of Belgium. Formula One, the art of motor racing, only on ESPN. Last week, for the average builder then, we talked about putting a lock on the chin, controlling the height of the backswing. This week, I'd like to talk simply about the walk to the foul line. Now, there's probably as many different walks or approaches to the foul line as there are bowlers in the country. Some people like to almost turn sideways. Others like to bend way forward at the waist. Still others like to bend their knees and kind of crouch up there. My personal recommendation is that we simply walk to the foul line like I was going to walk right at that camera. But think about walking tall, keeping the back in what I would call a high back position and like I had a string holding my head up. And the reason for this, as I get to the next to the last step, when I'm in this position, I want to bend my right knee. And this gives me a place to descend from. So when I bend that knee and go into the slide, I'm in a leverage position where I can get the thumb out of that ball and lift the bowling ball. Just like if I want to lift a, a bag of cement, I have to bend the knees and keep the back up. Now, earlier I threw a shot. Let's take a look at those things and see how it works out. We can see that I'm standing tall to begin with, right there, push it out, and still walking tall with the knees slightly flexed. As I hit the backswing, watch the right knee bend. And look at the leverage at the bottom of the swing. I was in perfect position to throw that shot. So if you're having a question on how to go to the foul line, 
Think about normal walking. Think about walking tall. Now be sure and join us next week from Lexington, Kentucky, where we'll have one more average film. All right, when we come back to ABC West Lanes, a couple of players who like to cross a lot of boards. Vespi and Weber. Don't go away. Okay, I've changed my game. The ball, the team, I like change. Change my underwear. Change briefs. Change boxes. Change flannel. Stripes. Change cool comfort. Change is good if it's always hands. Just when we get our things on you. Football fans, get ready for Sports Illustrated's exclusive NFL team kickoff kit. Free with your paid subscription to SI. Just tell us your favorite team. Cowboys! Packers! 49 And we'll give you more than ever before. This is incredible! Your team kickoff kit starts with your official 1994 team video. Free Cowboys video? Free Brown video? If I got a free Giants video, I'll be the luckiest man in the world. Oh, man! Where can I get it? It's an inside look at your favorite team. It's brought to you as only Sports Illustrated can. And there you go, surprise! Your team kickoff kit also brings you this authentic NFL team cap free. It's an unbelievable football package that no real fan can be without. Call now. Use your credit card. And you'll get 54 issues of SI for only $1.47 an issue. Save over 50% off the cover price. And your incredible team kickoff kit is free. Nobody gets you into football like Sports Illustrated. Get into it. Welcome back to ABC West Lanes in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, a suburb of Harrisburg. Bob Bespy to start match number two, coming off a 249-246 victory over Walter Ray Williams, Jr. P. Weber's still covering a lot of boards. It'd be interesting to watch, even more than, than Bespy's covering. Ooh, you got it back. <laughs> well, Michael. Well, see, I never threw one like that, Dennis. Why so, would you be so nervous about that shot? Well, I saw Bespy. I got close to that edge. I there. understand that. Got real close there. You see that he bellied that ball. Over 11 boards, about 11 boards. So steady at 16.4 miles per hour. He never really sent it wide. Comes out with an X of his own on lane 34. So we're going to watch the circle pattern here in game number two. Again, it, it, it's an outside shot. P. Weber starting it way inside, getting it outside down the lane. Our all-time leading money winner. Over a million six. Really? 32 now. I can remember when he was 18. Just had a birthday the other day. Brooklyn. Oh, and if you see that on replay, you'll see the head pin turn sideways and go into the 5-9. Now, what must he be thinking right now after that shot? Watch this. Watch the head pin then. Boom. I can remember sitting back watching my parents bowl at Sun Valley Bowl years ago, and a lady bowling carrying strike after strike, just like that. <laughs> they had been going Brooklyn, they had been turning sideways and carrying the five nine. His best he leaves the four pin. Double duty. Has to be changing equipment to shoot the spare. I'd be interested to know, Mike. Why Bob maybe hasn't gone to throwing the ball a little bit straighter at the Spurs? Probably he's experimenting with it. Yeah, he yeah. Maybe it's tough for his mentality as much as he likes to turn it loose. Even at the Spurs, he's going to have to hook it soon. Well, I'll tell you, Dan, as he goes on in his career, in order to, to really maintain it, I think he's going to have to develop that. You've got to be a good spare shooter out here, too, not just a great strike bowler. Especially in the championship round. Especially, right. I mean, you just can't afford to give away frames. Open frames are like, here are like turnovers in football. Turn it out to the weeds and gets the message back for the 10 pin. Weber with that five-step approach. Watch the high backswing. Kind of creeps up there. 
see that high backswing. Now he drives forward into that final slide. Look at how good balance left arm out there. That follow through. I mean, really, he, at the foul line, he looks marvelous. Just solid. One of the great stylists of all time. And what you have to realize, too, as he leaves the 10 pin, is he wasn't the only Weber that competed this week. PBA Hall of Fame father Dick also played in the tournament this week. Didn't get to the match play finals, but he bowled nonetheless. And bowled pretty well early on, from what I heard. You know, Pete has that high backswing, but as you watch him in person, it doesn't appear to be that high. Not like he, 10 years ago when he was really, it seemed like he was almost going to fall over backwards. It was so high. Another tickler for Vespi. And I had a chance to ask him, Bob, why have you done so well here at ABC West Lane? Well, I'll tell you what, it's been a long time since I made a show here. It's been one year. This is, la this is the last show I made. Uh, I bowled quite well on that show. I shot a 245 and lost to Brian Davis with a bad break. And uh, I think if I bowl good tomorrow, the, uh, if I get off to a good start, I think I'll be good for the whole show. The point is, I just got to be aggressive the whole show. I just haven't been aggressive in a year. So uh, I won't know until I get there. 3-6-10 in the left-hand lane. Looks like he cut that one off a little yep. short. He's got to give it the room. You know, he almost got it out to the edge. His dad looks on. I know I'm in trouble when I'm older than the fathers. Well, you got to realize, Mike, that's pretty much how it's going to happen from yeah, here on. Right. So you got to accept it. That was his dad. I mean, I mean, I hope everybody picked up on that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that young-looking guy was his dad. Right. Yeah. Back to work now for Weber. Winner of this match takes on the always excitable Chris Warren and then steady Randy Peterson who led this one is our top seat. Now in practice, as P leaves a 10 pin, he threw three or four channel balls. Swinging at that moment much, trying to get it out to about the first or second board at 40 feet. You make a little mistake and it goes right on in. Interesting to compare when you look at these two players, Mike, between their break points, where they're looking to get the ball to start the angle back. See there, there's the difference in the, in the match right now. Weber ahead by 11 pins. Pete Weber made in six. Marshall still way up there. And Albie Roth, Walter Ray creeping up. Great shot by Pete Weber, this time on lane 33. So he's made the adjustment on the left-hand lane as well. Let's see if he can hang on to it. Vespi and Weber locked up in a very good second match here. And we'll be back with a conclusion right after this timeout. It is time for the big question. What is the extra in Mickey D's extra value meal? Now, some think it's a money thing. $2.99 to be exact. Then there are the brothers and sisters into variety. See, you can get four for 99 extra value meals, like Big Mac, cheeseburger, quarter pounder with cheese, and McChicken. And for a large portion of folks, it's the large portion of those world famous golden fries. But for me, what you want, what you want, what you want is what you get at McDonald's today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Leave it to Peerless Faucet to create a shower so smart, it can not only sense when a toilet has been flushed, it can also adjust the water temperature accordingly. Scald Guard technology by Peerless. Get more out of your faucet than just water. I don't sell houses, I sell dreams. Why would 9 out of 10 customers recommend Century 21 to their friends? It's a large, large organization, but it's also as personal as me and you. Century 21, rated number one. Friday night, a WBC Super Bantamweight Championship. Tracy Patterson defends his title against Hector Acero Sanchez. Top Rank Boxing on ESPN. Oh, you gotta love it. Guys are playing baseball, just for the fun of it. <laughs> They're not on strike. Dick and Don, they won't be there. They won't even be talking about this game. Well, they might, they might be watching. Don't forget, Little League World Series action on ESPN. My gosh, some live baseball, what a joy. Dick and Don talking tomorrow. 
Haven't talked to either one of them. Ooh, the late seventh in. Almost. Best be hanging around in this match, but Pete Weber looks like he's got that uh, big circle hook lined in pretty well right now. That's the seventh in. Remember when I was talking about the uh, the break point? Watch the break point in Bespy. Much sooner than, than uh, Weber's, yeah. right? Completely different. And then Chris Warren and Randy Peterson. I think those are theirs are pretty similar. In but the way they're way playing. down the lane. Yeah, no question. In practice, Randy had the best shot mm -hmm. by far. Shovel, Brooklyn. Oh, I know shovel. A white blower <laughs> in August. <laughs> oh, Vespi with a huge oh. break there. Look at Pete's going. Oh no, don't tell me. A reverse blower here. This is where I always used to throw him when I needed a strike in the pot game. Just talk about shaking him up, and Bob stamped his foot. And he says, all right, perfect, perfect. Weber back to work. Ooh. There's just so many possibilities with that big hook that are bad. <laughs> the light, the 210, your high, all kinds of combinations. What, he doesn't lose count. If you can convert it, it's just like a 10 -pin. Nope. And we got a pretty even match right now, Dan. One mistake is all it takes. Beautiful shot the last time on lane 33. So let's see if Pete Weber can block out the bad break and start over. You're right. What a pretty shot on that lane. Weber just covering so many boards. It's just foreign to my name. Seeing that out to maybe the second board at, at close to 50 feet. Well, then there's the break point. Well, this is a little bit further down the lane than it was when he initially started the championship round, but this is probably about 40 feet now. Well, again, you know, the thought in his mind is staying aggressive. You know, when he's not aggressive, he'll probably break sooner. And we can see that he's suddenly taking a 10-pin match, or uh, lead in this match now, heading to the ninth frame. Possible 246. Had 249 in the opener. He needs to stay aggressive. In a lot of room. Boy, oh, that's as good a shot as he thrown tonight. Terrific shot by Vespi, who has now seized a bit of momentum here in match number two. But you don't get to 21 titles unless you are able to execute from behind and under pressure like Pete Weber. And he's got to. It's ninth frame. He's down 20. He's got to cut into that lead right now. And gets the job done. Oh. Beautiful clutch shot. Wasn't that pretty? Well, it sets it up for the 10th frame. Pete can go out for 236. He needs the first one to get himself even in the match. Counts even. Thing is, that if Weber strikes it out, he can't shut out that speed. But at least he's posted the score. Oh, yeah. This is the big shot right here. His wife Kim looking on. Gorgeous as always. Perfect. Leaves the 10. Boy, he just threw that beautiful. Disappointment written all over his face. A tremendous effort in the clutch, but comes up with the 10. Ball comes in behind the head pin so much now that, you know, he can leave that 10 pin so easily. So it was a rocket at the spare. Well, when you cross that many boards, it's a good news, bad news scenario. There are times when you don't carry as well as you'd like. He lost his patch. He had on his slacks. He lost he the match as well. Well, not yet. <laughs> not yet. I know. That's what he's thinking. Yeah. 
Count can be important here. He needs to get all he can. Well, you know this is strike. Yeah, same basic hit, only he got the 10 out. That's what Pete's saying. Sure, now you strike. Right. Does me a little good. Yeah. But Baspi, who hasn't yet been tested in a while, is going to have to come up with something here in the 10. He's got to have a spare strike right now. He didn't either. He watched it all the way. <laughs> Held pocket perfect. Weber gives him a high five, and Vestry is two for two here. Giving these thanks right there. Mm -hmm. A wonderful shot by Vestry in the clutch. And uh, with a strike here, a second game in the 240s. Did you see that a little, a little slide there, a little wow. dipsy do? Goodbye mopping off the brow <laughs> after that bad break. <laughs> well, forget 240, but more than enough as he puts on a little spare shooting exhibition as well. Vespi, two for two as he wins 231 to 215 over Pete Weber, who ends up fourth. When we come back, it'll be Chris Ward and Bob Vespi in the semifinal match. Sometimes you can find the future in a corner of your past, even if the future seems a bit imposing. Because sometimes things really haven't changed, they've simply gotten better. And sometimes you find that things that meant a lot to you then can mean a lot to you now. And sometimes you can get something back you thought you might be losing. Bowling at BPAA Center, it's a whole lot more than a game. Clearview Lanes in Mount Joy. Savings keep growing during your Quality Plus Ford dealer's factory authorized clearance. You can still get a great clearance deal of America's number one selling small car Ford Escort. Just $189 a month with a driver's side airbag standard. Choose from four Escort LX models. Save on every number one selling Ford in stock. Ford's factory authorized clearance is in high gear. Hurry, see your Quality Plus Ford dealer today. The 1994 PBA Summer Tour will come to its completion down in Lexington, Kentucky next Tuesday night, August 30th at 7.30 right here on ESPN with the championship round finals of the Greater Lexington Open. It's the first time the National Tour has ever appeared in Lexington, so they're looking for all sorts of excitement down in the bluegrass state. Let's take a look now at the rest of the top 24 this week, Mike, the way they stacked up at the end of the week after 42 games. Is this the way the horse is finished? Or, or, uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess you could say that. Doug Kent, one of the real thoroughbreds on the tour with a nice week, ended up a close sixth. Kirk Von Kruger, one of the outstanding lefties from Pensacola, Florida, was number seven. And, of course, Dell Ballard on the comeback trail, uh, finishing eighth this week. A good, solid week for Dell. Dell worked out with a therapist this week, too, Steve Hoskins, who won earlier this year. Joe Salvemini overcoming back problems. And a Hey, we haven't seen it in a while. I'm Leto Monicelli. Back from Venezuela. And uh, uh, a good 12th place finish for Mark Mosabi. Is that what it is? Mosabi. Ah, Mosabi. That's what it is. Ed Richardson was number 13 this week. And Jimmy Johnson from Wilmington, Delaware was number 14. Jim Johnson with a lot of 300 games. Mm -hmm. Bob Spalding led this tournament for a while. Len Blakely was in 16th position. And Dave Arnold we saw earlier this year finished 17th. On down the line, Steve Wilson, a talented player who won earlier this year from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 19th, Jeff German and Jimmy Johnson, the son of PBA Hall of Famer Don Johnson, 20th this week. Roger Bowker from Ocala, always bowls well. Philip Reagan, our uh, scorekeeper tonight, and Andy Nyer, right from Pennsylvania. And rounding out the top 24, Dave Traber, who's had really a solid year from start to finish. And a tough break for our alternate this week, Ken McNeely, first time ever in the top 24. And uh, he was taken ill uh, early on in the finals and had to bow out. So good luck to him next week. When we come back, the semifinal match featuring Chris Ward and our red-hot Bob Vespi. 
If your bacon cheeseburger isn't flame broiled, fire it. Welcome to Burger King. And get a new flame broiled bacon mega supreme. The new bacon mega supreme is a third pound of beef broiled over an open flame. And flame broiling beef frying four to one. Two patties smothered in hot, crispy bacon. Melted cheese, lettuce, and tomato. So if it's fried, it ought to be fired. Get the new flame broiled bacon mega supreme. More great taste for more great value. Only at Burger King. Seattle, average rainfall, 39 inches. Phoenix, average high, 103 degrees. Minneapolis, average low, 7. Every year, Anderson windows and patio doors stand up to the harshest sun, the coldest wind, the hardest rain. So much for the law of averages. Remember when Strike, Mencha swung and missed? These guys do. The Little League World Series, live, afternoons on ESPN and evenings on ESPN2, where the only numbers anyone cares about are on the scoreboard. I said you were rolling down the channel on lane 35. That would be your vantage point of a huge crowd here tonight. Yeah, there is a nice crowd here tonight, right? Oh, tremendous. Great pro-am. Interesting, you know, we got a match here now between two guys that have struggled all year, looking to get back on track. So this is a huge game for either one of these two players. Espy opens with a Brooklyn, guilty as charged. It'll be interesting to see what Bob does on the right lane the next time over there. I mean, he gets that good break on the left when he went, you know, looked like he was a little left, the ball held pocket for a strike, and then he gave it room and left the washout. Don't let the height or the size fool you with this customer. Well, he's got his weight still at 115. I wonder if he's picked up any weight. The old 24810. Looks like that ball just kind of fell off his hand a little bit then. He didn't snap through it like he normally does. This can be made by getting the ball to the extreme left of the two pin and you kind of clip them and they all slide across. What a try. He hit it at perfect, I'll tell you what, to, to try and make it. Now he's talking to it. Thanks, I've been on TV all year and you do that to me right away. See, he just clips the two pin. Now the four gets the eight and the two should get the 10, but it goes in front of it and the eight goes behind the 10. And it looks like it might still get it. And it moved it, but not enough. A little nudge. Now he runs high on the left-hand lane. Well, I that to start. Missed the head pin on the right, <laughs> on the right-hand lane, and you're running away, Brooklyn, on the left. Yeah, it's been a while since he's been on TV. Yeah, Ooh, great boy. shot at the end of practice too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, through plenty of strikes. Well, it's a little different now. The lights are on. Throws a knuckleball to spare and gets it. Best be looking to jump all over that open frame. Right. And does. Cork screwed right off his hand. Ball spinning. I think that ball turns over eight or ten times before it gets to the arrows. 
I thought maybe he did it in his approach. <laughs> really uh, a very unique player when he's got it going. Uh, he's got that bent elbow. You remember uh, Don Carter had a bent elbow. Earl Anthony's elbow was bent slightly. Maybe that's what we should be teaching all along instead of the other way around. Yeah, those two guys fair okay. <laughs> like I said, he'd like to jump with both feet all over the open frame. Well, that's an aggressive nature that he definitely has and what everybody saw when he came out here. And which, uh, quite frankly, a lot of players didn't like. Justin, oh, a real good aggressive shot there and a solid nine pin. Chris is saying the ten got me the last time. Now the nine draws the sword. He holds up two fingers in game. Twice as lame. Twice you did it to me. He's talking to the lane as if he could talk back. Oh, yeah, like you never spoke to the pin. Oh, I was, I was the model of decorum, I'll throw. <laughs> <laughs> if they only knew. <laughs> Those pins have heard a lot of stories through the years. Chris Warren has really been one of the outstanding television bowlers over the last four or five years. I talked to him and asked him about why. Uh, basically because I know I'm getting paid. That seems to be the large part. If, you, if, you, if you're confident, confidence comes through. But when you're guaranteed money, you can't complain. Well, it's, uh, I don't know about that. The baseball players are <laughs> both they all on the same track. <laughs> 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 Aaron shot. Well, he's in trouble on 33. Yeah. Been hooking more for all the players all night long. Despy, though, it seems to have figured out both of them, and it seems to be with Bob that it's a uh, matter of execution. His wife, who's expecting, looking up. Mm -hmm. Maggie, Maggie, do I think in October. In October. Well, not, not too long. You know. <laughs> well, yes, he says the baby needs shoes. It's really interesting because it's kind of changed. Chris's approach out here on the national tour, and I guess it, it always would. When you're married, you have your first child, your priorities have to change dramatically. Well, well responsibilities now. Very professional shot. Interesting, he threw a hook at this, Dan. He did not try and throw it straight, as some players do. Threw the hook and converted the 310 perfectly. With his hook, he could throw it between them. Ooh, best with a 360 movie at 15 strikes in the first two games. Now he opens with a four-bagger here in the semifinal. And you remember, he was in this situation last year, bowling Brian Davis to try and get to the championship match. Shot 245 and didn't win. He wants to eliminate any possibility of not getting to the championship match right now. fate is on his side here this evening. Well, at least in this match, you know, he's got 24 300 games, you know, so he's used to throwing a lot of strikes in a row, and who knows how many 300s he's got in practice. I'm sure those are all just sanctioned ones. He says, thank you. Thank you very much. Applause for Chris Ward, who finally gets an even break on May 34. You tell him about the body language and and the way that he's approaching lane 34. Mike, you have to forget about all that, don't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to forget about the five ball you're just staring at. And just try and get to a strike and now a double. He picked the finish on this left lane. He's got to give it room. More speed, more room. And guess what? An X, a double for Chris Ward. Vespi, who opened big in game number one, has come out with a five-bagger here to start match number three. Of course, he started match number one with six. Mm -hmm. Oh, did that whole pocket? Did you see that? Woo! He's just tanking it down. Well, he can strike. There's no doubt about that. Boy, he didn't get that one on near as wide as he has some of them. They wound up flushing the one three. 
See that ball just rolling on towards the back end, right through the pins. Right through the pins, right, yeah. Starting to get pumped up here as well as the crowd. Out to almost the first board. That is the first board. And it comes back now in the last six or seven feet all the way to board 17. Well, actually, that'd be about board 60. I was going to say. Yeah. But he'll take it. Absolutely. All right. Warren didn't get up there for a while. It's like he did want to respond to that uh, out the window and back in slight strike. Now he's just basically is out of this match. Chris last night was the top seed player heading into the position round game and made one bad shot, lost the game to Randy Peterson, who took over the top seed position. And you can just see him kicking himself right now. First of all, I should have led this tournament, and second of all, I should have been bowling for the time. Right, and he still had a chance in the 10th frame then. If he gets the second strike in the 10th, he leads the tournament. He left a four pin then. But he had a little malfunction with the machine at that time. He had to re-rack the pins or something like that. It kind of seemed to interrupt his concentration or his flow. 65 pins down. Not much hope in this match. Shows you how tough the competition is on the PBA Tour. The player of this caliber could have the slump that he's having. We talked about that with George Branham III, a terrific player who came off an outstanding year. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a fair assessment. Trying to stay perfect. Oh, he's locked in on lane 34. So this is the big shot, you think, over here in the I ninth frame? So. I think so. I think the key for him, he's got a ton of room on 33. If he sends it right, the ball will get back. But if he sets him a little short, it'll hook. But on 34, he can go either way. Yep. He's got the whole lane on 34. Well, he never takes very much time. He's up there ready to go. Uh -uh, Brooklyn, yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo. Minute, a couple of them. Vespic. Oh, look at him. He says, I'll take anything I can get. Keep in mind, PBA is offering $10,000 for a perfect game. And oh, another problem for Chris Warren, who's just really trying to fill the frames right now. He grabs another ball, and he's up there in a heartbeat. He's going to finish this game out in a flash. Rack barely up. Open frame, and I had an opportunity to talk to Chris and ask him about, about his priorities and how they've changed now that he's married and expecting his first child. Baby needs a new pair of shoes. Uh, yes, me and my wife, we're expecting our first child in uh, mid-October, so... Uh, Things have changed drastically in my life. I uh, got married, settled down, fixed to have a child. Uh, things seem to be going good. So no matter what happens to him here tonight, obviously he's on a roll. Chris Warren obviously disappointed with what's transpired in this one tonight, but uh, you can better believe he'll be back next week. Meanwhile, all eyes now on Bob Busby, who has the first nine. It's there. No, nope, it didn't make it. Boy, it just didn't make the turn. He leaves the two pin. Good try by Vespi. Looked like a pretty good shot. I thought, you know, it's so hard to read his, the reaction yes. on his ball uh, that it looked like it would make the turn. It just never did on this right lane that we could tell his ball holds pocket better over here. I wonder if he just came out of it a touch early. It didn't look like he stayed with it and got the leverage quite the way he had. It, could, it must have been something like that because it looked like it was pretty much on line. Right. Just didn't catch the handful that he <laughs> normally does. Hmm. <laughs> Terrific game nonetheless. Started with the first nine. That's the one he was looking for right there. 279 for Vespi, who could have added 10,000 more. And he's got a 300 game. 
Final score, 279 to 180. So Vespi in the title match against Randy Peterson, our top seed. Peerless Faucet didn't come up with the idea for a spout long and high enough to reach over and into large objects. We merely adapted it for the kitchen. High-rise faucet designs by Peerless. Get more out of your faucet than just water. With Minwax Polyurethane, you can do more than admire your wood. You can live with it, too, because Minwax contains pure urethane oil to protect wood while giving it beauty you can really live with. Minwax keeps wood beautiful. You're unbelievable. Like ballet with a boom. Be the ball. I like the action. It's action. A pinch of dust. Be the ball. It's all in the beard. The grass. The approach. Mine. The shoe. You're unbelievable. <laughs> Come, buddy. You're unbelievable. Your brain. I am the ball. Who loves your ball? You're unbelievable. Not very often you get an opportunity to ask a player who's just come off the championship round pair of lanes what it felt like to maybe have a shot at 300, but you had the first night. What about the shot in the 10th? Well, I thought it was flush off my hand. You know, I just didn't really want to get slow with it. You know, I've got a couple clutch Brooklyns there. But uh, I thought it was a good shot off my hand, and uh, unfortunately it didn't fall down. But, hey, a win is a win. One more to go. One more to go. Looking forward to the title match. Uh, are you lined in on both lanes? Yeah, I think so. The left lane has a little hooked to the left of the, where I'm playing, so it's a little touchy there. But uh, I'm kind of, if I'm going to shoot 300, I'd rather shoot the last game. I wouldn't want to have to come off that high and bowl for the title. All right, Vespi with 279. We'll take a break, come back. Randy Peterson ready to throw his practice shots. Vespi and Peterson will buy for the title in the Greater Harrisburg Open when we return to ABC West Lanes in the... Blockbuster has 9,000 ways to make it a blockbuster night. How about another story? Yeah, I got one with boys, kids, and girls. <laughs> Debbie, these shots are fabulous. Beautiful, Debbie. Better than the last time, Tony? Absolutely. It's my job to make sure people look good. A few weeks ago while doing test shots with Debbie, I noticed something. Dander. So I told her about head and shoulders. You see, regular shampoos merely rinse flakes away, so they could come back. But look, head and shoulders help stop flakes from even forming. See the difference? Yeah, picture perfect. Head and shoulders turns dander problems into beautiful hair. Just one more strike for a 300 game. For the inside track on your favorite bowlers becomes part of the PBA fan club. All fan club members receive a TV and media guide and some programs along with your official membership card. Also, for a limited time only, this millionaire's club poster is included. So don't wait, call today. Call 1-800-299-4PBA for your membership in the PBA fan club. Time now for us to take a look at our championship frame. And uh, Bob Vespi featured in match number one, this one in the 10. And he had to have the first strike, or at least nine spare strike, to shut out Walter A. Williams, Jr. Struggled for three frames in a row after opening up with six. Got aggressive again on this shot. Had to give it room on this left lane and did. Snaps out that 10 to win the match. His reaction. Said he wanted to get off to a good, quick start, and he did with a 249 to 246 victory over Walter A. Williams, Jr. And it was on to match number two here at ABC West Lanes. Once again, Bob Espy, and again in the 10th frame. And this time, uh, he needed some kind of mark. Steve Weber left the 10 pin in the 10th frame on a couple of strikes. Vespi right here. Looked like he got it in a little bit, Dent, but the ball held pocket. 
His reaction was, well, wonderful. 231 to 215 as he advanced over Pete Weber in another tight match. And then it was on to the semifinal where Vespi started with the first nine. And he struck in the 10th frame the previous two games when he needed a real strike here. As he said, when it came off his hand, he thought it would get back, but it just kind of hung there, leaving the two pin. Similar to Brian Davis last year. Final score in the semifinal match, 279 to 180, a victory over Chris Warren, which brings us to the title match. Two of the outstanding right-handed talents on the PBA National Tour, ready to shoe it up for $16,000 in first place prize money. If your bacon cheeseburger isn't flame broiled, fire it. Welcome to Burger King. And get a new flame broiled. Bacon Mega Supreme? The new Bacon Mega Supreme is the third pound of beef broiled over an open flame. And flame broiling beef frying four to one. Two patties smothered in hot, crispy bacon. Melted cheese, lettuce, and tomato. So if it's fried, it ought to be fired. Get the new flame broiled Bacon Mega Supreme. More great taste for more great value. Only at Burger King. Okay, I've changed my game. The ball, the team, the light change. Change underwear, change free, change boxes, change flannel, stripes, change cool comfort. Change is good if it's always hands. Just wait, we get our things on you. With Minwax Polyurethane, you can do more than admire your wood. You can live with it, too, because Minwax contains pure urethane oil to protect wood while giving it beauty you can really live with. Minwax keeps wood beautiful. Football fans, get ready for Sports Illustrated's exclusive NFL Team Kickoff Kit. Free with your paid subscription to SI. Just tell us your favorite team. Cowboys! Packers! 49ers! And we'll give you more than ever before. This is incredible! I love it! Your Team Kickoff Kit starts with your official 1994 team video. A free Cowboys video? Free Brown video? If I got a free Giants video, I'll be the luckiest man in the world. Oh, man! Where can I get it? It's an inside look at your favorite team. Brought to you as only Sports Illustrated can. And ain't no Your team kickoff kit also brings you this authentic NFL team cap free. It's an unbelievable football package that no real fan can be without. Call now. Use your credit card. And you'll get 54 issues of SI for only $1.47 an issue. Save over 50% off the cover price. And your incredible team kickoff kit is free. Nobody gets you into football like Sports Illustrated. Get into it. All right, coverage of the United States Amateur begins at 1 p.m., 10 a.m. on the West Coast. John Harris, the defending champion. I've got a dark horse pick for you, Mike Turbin. A guy who qualified out of my region, Rick Merrow, a good friend of mine, playing down in Contra Vedra this week. Good luck to Rick. Hope he qualifies for the match play version of the United States Amateur. Bob Vespi has already won three games. He is heading into the title match. I talked to him and said, Bob, what would it mean if you came away a winner here tonight? Yeah, get that gorilla off my back. You know, a lot of people said I had a monkey on there. I think I have a gorilla up there. Uh, a win tomorrow will be the best thing for me. You know, I can go home. I have one more week. Then I can go home and just remember that I can win again. And I have five more to bowl in the fall. And that'll give me a better outlook. You know, I've been pressing financially out here. And I think that's another factor that's been working on my mind. And a uh, win tomorrow will take all those pressures away. Interesting that Peterson and Vespi end up in the title match. Don't think that they're necessarily the best, the of, best friends of friends in a little... competitive atmosphere. They shook hands. Yeah, there you go. And the player that finished fifth for us tonight, Walter Ray Williams Jr., going to join us here uh, for some of the title match in the booth. And uh, we'll get his uh, assessment of this championship round pair. Randy Peterson had a great shot in practice, came out with too much speed and ends up with a wash shot. And the same lane that gave Walter some trouble with that lane 33. Seems to hook more, but you throw it harder and it doesn't make it back, right? Well, I think what it is, uh, if you get in a little bit of the first, if you're left of the first arrow, it hooks a lot more, but once you start getting outside of it, it really goes straight. Randy came back after practice, throwing us after the second game, and said the left lane was hooking more. And I said, well, yeah, but when you start getting out, it, it goes really straight, and that's what happened. Peterson with an open has opened the door for Vespi, who jumped all over Chris Warren early on in the semifinal. Getting the eight pin out there, nice break. Uh, again, now that's a couple shots there where he's come up white on lane 34. 
ball just doesn't seem to make the, the flip at the back end for uh, Bob on this right lane. It's funny, Walter Ray, because one of the comments that you made last night as Vespi gives it right back was, hey, these are all power players. What in the world am I doing in this field? <laughs> well, I bowled pretty well this week to stay in there, but um, the, uh, the, uh, you know, the right lane there, he, he might have just started getting amped up and, and trying to get too much speed on it. And oil was carrying down just a little bit. That one he really softened up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was just way soft. Comes up with a nice break on the left-hand lane. And he's had that break uh, three or four times tonight where it's just the three pin, not the 310, not the 3610. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> And a mark. Yeah, he did that against me, too. <laughs> yeah, he did that a couple of times against you. Bet Randy he's had some great breaks. Yeah, Randy using this this goal ball, he went back and forth between two balls all week, and this one is for when the lanes are a little bit tighter, so the oil's carried down, and he needs to use this to try and get the ball back. Stretched out and made a quality shot there. Walter Ray, what does that do for you, confidence-wise, if you're Randy Peterson? Well, seeing that uh, Bob's struggling now, that's definitely going to make him feel better. Um, and it, the thing is, he's got to throw a good shot here and get the ball to the pocket. If he can do that, he's going to be tough to beat. Randy with kind of a hesitation right as he gets to the top of the swing. And so many players tonight with that high back swing. The back straightens out. Look at the follow through straight through. Good balance at the line. Left the wash out the last time on this lane moving inside better follow through that time key shot and a beauty for peterson who bounces back nicely with a double randy so often when you see that follow through cross in front of his body the ball comes up light when it goes right straight through it goes right to target all right is Another it my break. imagination or is the right-hand lane starting to tighten up a little bit? I think it is. Um, I mean, every shot that I couldn't believe it right before we started the match with Bob, uh, the, the lanes just tightened up incredibly fast, especially the left lane for me. It, it just threw me off. I just didn't get a chance to get lined up on it. This time, no problem with the two pin. So with a player like Vespi, uh, you know, when that starts happening, then does he does he just try and overpower with more revs, or does he soften up with speed a little bit? He's, well, I, I can't say what he does, but what he should do is move a hair right, but he's afraid if he moves too far right, it's just going to jump left on him, like that. And he's been very fortunate on lane 33, at least two. I'm, I'm trying to remember, maybe even three Brooklyn strikes tonight on that lane. I think he's had uh, four. And so far in the title match, not a ball in the pocket. One other question here for Walter Ray. Do you bowl differently? When you know it's for the title, I mean, this guy's averaging 255 all the way coming into the title match, and he hasn't hit the pocket. Well, it was a fortunate 255. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't uh, right in the pocket every single time. He got a, quite a few breaks, and so really he was, you know, averaging 220, 225. But uh, the breaks and stuff gave him the big scores, and now he might be thinking about it. Randy Peterson looking for career title number 10. Oh, another beautiful shot. Randy taking advantage, seeing that his opponent right now is, is struggling, a little bit lost, and he jumps right on at him. See the follow through right at the target again. And he literally jumps on him. <laughs> Given Bob some of his own medicine. Yeah. Yes, right. to help that one a little bit. The follow-through went just a hair left and the ball didn't quite make it. That was a nice shot, though. I wouldn't want to get the ball any further left or any further right on that lane. <laughs> Is it, it's, a, it's a touchy lane. I think it? so. I think he's got a better reaction on the right lane, but um, if he keeps it there, I think he's going to be just fine. Just, right now, Bob doesn't have, have a clue. Of course, Randy Peterson, this week has meant a lot to him in terms of qualifying for the AMF Dick Weber Classic, which will be the opening stop on ESPN this fall. We see Randy was in, I think, 24. Three, four, six, seven. 
light, light, and tries to make an adjustment. And we can see some of the other, the top 24 to qualify. Tremendous event, $60,000 for first. Pete Weber putting himself in a good position tonight. Well, you know, it's interesting. Pete will have to bowl Father Dick at one time during that event because all 30 players play each other at least one game in match play. So the question is, who will want to eat a root for? I know who I'm going with. <laughs> I'm going with the guy that's won in, what, five decades? Oh, Dick, yeah. now just pay attention. I want you to go to a 15-pound ball, first of all, for a little more speed. If you do that, you can beat it. And best be right now all over the lot, Michael. As we say, hasn't had a ball in the pocket yet. Yeah, he's just totally lost. He's trying to figure out what to do. The right lane was, he was light on it, and he finally made an adjustment. He just took the right too much for him. Meanwhile... Randy Peterson is nothing but poised and confident, just out there executing shot after shot. Yeah, the game is just speeding by for Best. I mean, the frames are going by and he can't get the ball in the pocket as Becky looks on, and anticipating that tenth win. And last night Randy talked about the fact that Becky has never seen him win in person, and he was really hoping that maybe end up in the winner's circle tonight. Don't know what it was that uh, disturbed him. Something that he heard at the point. Somebody started to applaud early. Randy uh, takes a lot of discipline to stop right in the middle, especially with that high back swing. You could hurt yourself. Randy in a commanding position here, just doesn't want to give him back. Back down. Wasn't able to regroup. Good break here, leading only the 6'10". Walter Ray, at this point in time, if you're Randy Peterson, do you become a little more conservative? I don't see why. He's He's got a pretty decent reaction. He knows how to play the lanes. He just has to go out and make good shots. Hard and straight. And Randy Peterson also had an opportunity to chat with us just prior to the telecast. Well, I think a lot of it depends on the lane conditions and the scoring environment. The scores are high, I mean, you got to get real aggressive because you, you got to throw strikes. If the scores are real low and the, and the pair's tricky, um, I don't know, I don't know if, you, you know, I don't want to say you have to be cautious, but maybe being careful, maybe that will determine, you know, how you play the, how you play the, uh, the lanes. A little more direct, maybe to try to stay out of trouble. question to him, Walter, was how you bowl from the number one position. I was wondering if you were listening as we see that Ernie Schlegel now has taken over from Carmen. <laughs> if was Couple of iron men, huh? <laughs> this time, Vespi finds the pocket, but no luck in terms of carry. A little, low, a little light there. I mean, at least that was close. He hasn't even been close on the left lane. It's been a three-pin every time. Thing is, though, he still has a chance in this match if somehow he could uh, figure out a way to put it together here in the last three or four frames. What's so amazing to me is that Bob Bestry averaged eight strikes a game for the first three games and hasn't had a strike in seven frames. That's, That's got a chance. It. All right. Have to feel a little better about that. Oh, yeah, but he's still... Bob's a really emotional player when he's when he's on and everything's going great. He's got the the emotion is just unbelievable. The proprietors the here, he's not on. Yeah, exactly. It goes the other way. Exactly. He's probably really down on himself. There are the Bowers right there. The proprietors for our uh, ABC Westlake. <laughs> Wanted that one badly. Wanted that one real badly. That's his good lane. He hit the left lane. He wanted to take advantage. That puts him in a commanding 45-pin lead. Again, the follow-through right at the target. Nine pin was up there for a second. His reaction is controlled aggression. It was interesting because by far and away, he had the best ball reaction during practice. Walter, were you aware of that or do you not pay any attention? Well, for the most part, some of us were just trying to carry the oil down. I really wasn't even trying to hit the pocket for a long time. And the old equalizer, the 2-8-10, suddenly puts uh, Vespi with a chance here. <laughs> That's a tough spare to make. There's two ways. You can bounce it out of the pit, 
which is really the safest thing for him to do. The other thing to do is hit the two over into the 10 and have it ricochet under the eight. Have you ever done that? I've done it that way. Have you done it? Actually, I picked this bear up twice in my life and it was both in the same game and I did it both different ways. <laughs> Back so in 1983. Pretty much looking for a break is what you're looking for. Yeah. Randy Peterson now with 180 through 9 mm -hmm. frames. Which means that if he could strike here, he could strike out for 200 even and put this match back even. Oh, my goodness. Amazing. Reminds me of Steve Cook a few years ago. I was thinking of Joe Berardi, but... Yes. <laughs> right. Now, Walter Ray, if you're Randy Peterson, you see that happen, what's that do to you emotionally? Well, I don't know. If I was Randy, I wouldn't have been watching. But uh, I don't know if he was watching. If he was, uh, it's definitely going to twinge at you because he knows he's been doing it all day. Um, it's just a matter of what Bob does here in the 10th. He's got to give it room and be aggressive. He did give it room. Well, it finally does leave the 310, but again... Walter said immediately as soon as he let it go, he didn't give it room. He's been living dangerously all night and gotten virtually every break in the book on the left-hand lane. Yeah, he's gotten quite a few breaks tonight. And he was in this match to the 10th frame, even though he hardly had a ball in the pocket. Well, Fespi, after averaging 255 for three games, ends up with 166. Randy Peterson going to waltz into career title number 10 oh, as he trips out the two pin. That's what Bob was looking for last game. <laughs> and it's the second victory of the year yeah, now for right. Randy Peterson. A long way back for him just a couple of years ago was wondering how long it was going to be before he could bowl again after the knee surgery. And Vespi with a brilliant performance for three games falls a little bit short. And in the last three years, he's now finished first, second, and third here at ABC West Lanes. He's covered all the bases. Mm. And he crunches it right in there. Very professional game, but uh, Vesti really never could attack him. Shows you how tough it is to win out here. And he was very serious last night talking about when his wife would be here. And he was really hoping he could win with her in the audience. It would mean so much to him. And obviously, uh, Randy Peterson... Very emotional. Tears in the eyes, you can see that. I asked him last night, before it all started, how important would it be to win this one this evening? It's, um, it's real big. You know, my wife's coming in, and I get to win a tournament with her being there. So, um, definitely be real emotional for, uh, for me to, to pull this one off with her being here. All right, Randy Peterson, the winner of the Greater Harrisburg Open, 16,000 for first. And when we come back, we'll chat with Becky and Randy about the big win. I think another thing uh, important to know is when we get a vehicle in, new or used, the first thing we do is figure out what the lowest price is we can sell that vehicle for. And that's the price that goes on the sticker in the windshield. So yes, it is a very good price. In fact, the lowest price that we can sell that vehicle for and still stay in business. At, At Keller Brothers Ford in Lidditz and Buffalo Springs. Feel the pride when you fill up with Sitco gasoline at Newcomers Pacific Pride locations. And now, Newcomer is making filling up your tank even more convenient. Just pick up a Pacific Pride card, and you'll feel the pride that goes into Sitco gasoline products. Using the Pacific Pride card provides you with savings, convenience, and 24-hour pump service. It's good for businesses, too, because of our convenient monthly billing statements. Feel the pride when you fill up with Sitco gasoline at Newcomers Pacific Pride locations. Pick up your card from Newcomer Oil today. The center highlight goes like this. I'm young and I'm fighting a guy, everyone says, the greatest fighter ever. And they tell me he's too fast and smart. And I'm too slow and small. And no one's cheering for me. And I win. Yeah, that was my sports center highlight. We're back with Randy Peterson and uh, Jim Shelley, who is the general manager here at ABC West Lanes, has a beautiful trophy. 
Well, Randy, uh, on behalf of everyone here at ABC West Lanes, I'm um, proud to present you with the championship trophy. Congratulations. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. <laughs> here, honey, let me hold it in. Oh. Lost for words. It's first for me, isn't it? Um, it was, uh, it was a great week, and I was just, I'm so happy that my wife was here to share this with me. I've never won with, with her being here before, and it, it means a lot to me. And I guess uh, Dave was a big inspiration to me last week. So, Dave, hope you're watching, buddy, and thanks for uh, in, inspiring me this week. Number 10, just like you, buddy. Thanks. All right, he's talking about Dave Husted, who won his 10th title last week. And uh, now we have uh, one of the owners, the president of ABC Incorporated, Gary Bauer, with a check. Yes, Randy, it's my pleasure on behalf of my family to present you with a check for $16,000. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right, we'll be back to talk to Randy and Bex, and who knows, Dave Husted may even call. Just one more strike for a 300 game. For the inside track on your favorite bowlers, become part of the PBA Fan Club. All fan club members receive a TV and media guide and some programs along with your official membership card. Also, for a limited time only, this millionaire's club poster is included. So don't wait, call today. Call 1-800-299-4PBA for your membership in the PBA fan club. I'm bored. Let's count the palm trees again. Why are you looking at me like that, Iggy? You okay. Get it out, you're weirding me, man. <laughs> Stop looking at me like that, would ya? You're creeping me out. Cut that out, man. <laughs> For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna twist my head off. Hey, good morning, and welcome to today. Come on, guys. You're such an inspiration. So hip, so hot, so happening to you and hey. A winning combination. Wait till we get our hands on you. I can't wait, can't wait. Just wait till we get our hands on you. Hey. If your bacon cheeseburger isn't flame broiled, fire it. Welcome to Burger King. And get a new flame broiled bacon mega supreme. The new Bacon Mega Supreme is a third pound of beef broiled over an open flame. And flame broiling beats frying four to one. Two patties smothered in hot, crispy bacon. Melted cheese, lettuce, and tomato. So if it's fried, it ought to be fire. Get the new flame broiled Bacon Mega Supreme. More great taste for more great value. Only at Burger King. All right. You've had a moment to settle down, regain your senses. I know you have a few people you'd like to thank. I'd like to thank everybody here at uh, ABC West. Uh, the tournament just gets better each, each year, and uh, uh, they really go out of our way. I'd like to special uh, thank Matt, who he does a great job with all the players, and everybody here that's associated with the ABC family. Um, it's been a great week. I'd also like to thank Brunswick for making the best bowling equipment money can buy. Thank you, Big B. <laughs> Randy, you're in, you're in command of the final match all the way through. Then suddenly in the ninth frame, the 2-8-10 pops up there. He gets to Brooklyn. What happened in the ninth frame, and what were you thinking when he got up to bowl the 10th? Well, I was trying to, you know, keep my emotions intact, and when I got that, that hit on the right lane, um, I think that was uh, the 8th frame. Or the, the double, right. For the double. When I doubled on the right lane, I got a little pumped, and I let out a little motion, and I went, went over the left lane. I threw it horrible, got it in, and flamed it, and it never hooked. So, um, you know, unfortunately for Bob, he had, he had a little trouble um, after his 270 game. He bowled great all day, and then all of a sudden, you know, he, he lost his reaction, and that, you know, that happens out here. i got to tip my hat to him. He bowled, uh, he bowled real great today. Yeah, but when he got up for the 10th after the Brooklyn, were you uh, thinking, well, there it goes? He's well, yeah, out? you know, I'm looking up at the scoreboard, and I'm like, well, if he strikes out, i got to strike spare, spare strike to tie.